stop the engine, sir. Do you know why I've stopped you, sir? Everything awful, sir. Oh, Chief, Constable, sorry, I didn't recognise the car, sir. Uh, this is uh, rather embarrassing, sir. I'm afraid I've just clocked you doing 120 mile per hour in a 40 mile per hour zone, sir. I'm sorry about that, sonny. I think I'm too drunk to read my speedometer. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but I'm going to have to arrest you. I mean, we can't be seen to let a member of the force get away with such a serious offence. I understand completely, Constable. However, you should know that just before you stopped me, I ran over and accidentally killed a Brazilian electrician. Well, well, why didn't you say so, sir? On your way, then. Keep up the good work, sir. Hello, welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed. I am Gareth Jones. These two are Richard Porter and Zog. Say hello, Richard Porter and Zog. Hello. Hello. N- anyone been caught for speeding? Not I know the show. No. You see, the show is called Gareth Jones on, on Speed, and uh, um, we, we don't speed, do we, boys? We may have done in the past, or have known people who have. Yes. Or got pulled by the police at We've some point. We've heard that it's happened occasionally. I, I haven't been pulled over for speeding for a very long time, but I no, did. I, uh, I was once very embarrassingly pulled over when um, driving at Ludbrook Grove on my way to work uh, many years ago. Was pulled over for. Um, uh, sorry, I'm reason I shouldn't actually tell the story. This okay, should... fine. <laughs> if it, is that going to get you in no, no, big no, legal no, no, trouble? No, 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 no. Can I just, I just say something? Yeah, go on. Can you hear me? It's I'm not really supposed to be taking part. When I was pregnant with our first child, <laughs> Gareth took this as an excuse to go speeding round the country so that if a police officer stopped him, he could say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm taking my girlfriend to hospital. It's and true. this actually happened, we got stopped, and they yeah. just didn't have any of it. That I, reminds I, me, actually. I, I, I it, it, serves, it serves you right. Can I, I worked with a bloke who was quite tall and had a certain sort of dignified presence to him. And he worked for the BBC, he was a, a sort of manager there. He was driving through Birmingham one night and he was very late because he was going to see a show at the Palladium or something. And he got stopped by this um, motorcycle cop. And he was like, where do you think you're going? And, and, and this guy, Paul, went, well, I'm really sorry, officer. I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm just late for the theatre. And the cop had missed out the word the and went, Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Doctor. <laughs> Follow me. Uh, <laughs> and they're about a mile from the big hospital in Birmingham, so they belted him there, blues and twos, <laughs> got him to follow him and pulled him into the front. So this guy Paul's like, well, what do I do here? So he had to pull into the front of the hospital. The, the motorcycle copper sort of pulled across the back of his car and, and, and so Paul had to get out and, and, and run towards the entrance of the hospital and he looked back and this policeman's still there giving him like a sort of cheery salute like he'd just done his civic duty. Paul had to run into the hospital and hide for ten minutes. Just in case someone says, oh, Doctor, case, yeah, exactly. On a, a, a gown, scrubs yes. him up, and he has to do three. I don't know, uh, hemorrhoidectomies or something. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? I did life saving operation. Remember that one? No, that's actually true. What Violet said that um, I didn't use it as an excuse for speeding, but uh, we were coming home and it'd been a terrible journey. And Violet was very pregnant, and we went that critical pa- point past a, a service station. It's the last service station before home on the M1. The M1. And um, I said, yeah. Do you need a wee? Gateway. Yeah, the one. I the very one. Oh, we London made, Speed Trap, we guys. Made, yeah. So yeah. Why we, we built we, a hotel? Tell there. Who wants to stay just outside London? Why would you want to do that? I don't understand. Buy a motorway. Well, you're either leaving London, in which case, if you're just that close, stay at home and set off early the next day, or you're nearly in London, keep on going, stay in London. I don't <laughs> yeah. understand. Don't get it. I got stopped at that very point by the London <laughs> Gateway, or the London Speed Trap, as I prefer to think of it these days. And we'd gone past the, the entrance to the, the service station. I said, do you need a week? No, that's OK. And she went, actually, I do. And I looked at it, and you were, what, seven and a half months pregnant at the time. And um, when you've got a seven and a half months pregnant woman in the car with you, when they need to go to the, the, the toilet, you have about 11-second warning. I have a memory of saying, please slow down, Gareth. <laughs> I'd already I'm made the decision. Well, <laughs> Selective and I, hearing. And I, I have to admit, hands up, I was stopped for doing over 110 mi- up miles per hour. Mm. And uh, and it what was silly, really. cars on the road? No, it was absolutely empty. In fact, it was a good job they stopped me then, because the only other car on the road was a Maserati 3000 GT that we'd really just been going quickly a few miles back. <laughs> <laughs> we were just enjoying the open road, because it had been a miserable journey with no traffic. And that's what happens, I think. You get pent up when you get stuck in traffic. When it does open up, you... 
oh, you go crazy. I, I apologise. I, I can't help. I, the thing is about that that I find I do drive particularly fast when I need a wee because you can't concentrate on anything else. You yeah, have to right. get to a loo. And yeah. I have an incredibly weak bladder. Do you remember Alex Ferguson, the Manchester United manager, was stopped for speeding uh, last year, I think, and his excuse in court, I think, was that he had diarrhoea and he was urgently trying to get to the loo. <laughs> now, I'm wondering, you know, is somebody who really, really needs the loo, is that making them a better driver in any way? No. You know, it's, 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 it's not, is it? I don't you know, know about you two, because I'm not. You're not in a great position. No, You're not I in a great state to be driving a car fast. You of are anything distracted. else except holding in a vast quantity of urine that I need to get rid of promptly. I'm sorry. I'm and no, and, and, and the, the racing driver's solution is not well, really an option mm, in, a, yeah. in a personal vehicle. And if you get stopped in that position for speeding because you're driving too quick because you need a wee, and, but you t the, you're talking to the copper there, you're quaking, you're very close yeah. to a, a really bad accident. No. K-Type Records presents... Now, this is what I call 80s music about Cars 1 with Teutonic Electro Overlords, Kraftwurst. British Cars, Bentley, Rolls Royce, German Cars, Bentley, Rolls Royce, Autobahn. Test songs from Elvin Costello. You don't need a heavy car to still enjoy performance. There are rocky cars available, which is simply not enormous. Get yourself a lightweight car, at least so aerial item. You'll be green when light turns green, but still be a boob item. Oh, get a life, I will drive and get a life. Be ecological, it's not just for the wife. Get a life. And the massive worldwide number one from U2-2. From the Pit Stop Boys. Girl, you know I love you. And without you I'd be lost. It's just that you remind me quite a lot of how I lost. Now, this is what I called 80s music about Cars 1. You just know there's going to be another one soon. Probably even before the end of this show. Gareth Jones on speed, on speed. Hello, hello, hello. I was stopped, I think, I mean, this was some time ago, I have to admit, this was seven years ago now, and I was stopped by, a, um, I think, a, a Rover, uh, the the 800 series. Mm -hmm. What's either the coolest or the oddest police car you've ever seen? Well, they do that stuff occasionally with a sort of publicity tool where they do, like Lotus gave the police an exige recently, I think. Oh, that's right, yeah. And most... You see them at motor shows, don't yeah, you? Yeah, no. And in fact, at the MPH show in London, they had a Caparo all no. decked out in the Met Police livery. No. You know, it's obviously just a publicity tool. But... Uh, most famously, Lamborghini had that Gallardo. They 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 dressed up with the uh, the Carabinieri or the the, the Polizia sort of livery in Italy yeah. and did that, which is fine. But they're always they're just promotional tools. You know, your average jam sandwich is still going to be uh, I don't know a Ford Focus diesel or something like yeah, that. Yeah. But it's an interesting point that not liveried up police car. What is the weirdest plain clothes police car you ever see? Because I'll tell you something. The other morning, I was driving uh, through London. And I was in traffic, and in the next lane there was a Volvo C70, you know, the the, the current yeah, one the, yeah. with the folding metal roof. Nice yeah. looking car. And I was sort of just behind it, and I noticed that in the back window, you know, the back window which would fold into the boot if you chose to go open top, set of LED lights gummed to the back window. Oh. Thinking, What's that all about? And I looked, and there was an extra aerial on the uh, or sort of other wing to the one that's the radio. That's aerial. a good sign. Yeah. So that, you know, my interest was piqued, 
And then we sort of pulled alongside it, and I was saying, because I was in the car with my girlfriend, and I said, oh, this is a police car, and she said, but it's a convertible. And she went, no, it can't be, it must be something else. He's got some kind of, you know, he's just, it, it, it's some sort of tricksy thing that he's got in there for some reason. And then she went, actually, no, it's got it in the front as well, on the dashboard, sure enough, another set of lights come oh. to the dash. In the car itself, two paunchy, 50-something men. So we hatched, for the rest of the time we were driving alongside this, this plot that they were two retired CID blokes who'd been brought back to solve a massive case and they'd gone, well, I'll tell you what, we'll do this for you, but we want a tasty motor. Yeah. And well, that's what they'd specified. It's like some kind on. of TV series hang starring on, Dennis on. Waterman. Remembering that we're old, right, we want, we're quite like a Volvo, because yeah, we, we, we buy a Volvo so, and always wanted a convertible. Now the kids are grown up and they've got kids, right? <laughs> we're going to have one of those, those C70s, what's it called, a C70s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what you think this is. With that roof off, Miami nice. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, fold the roof back, you forget to ungum all your gubbins that you need. You're going to crush all your little lights and things like that. Put your Kojak light on the roof and then fold, fold it, it back away. and it all gets crushed in the boot. It's ridiculous. That has said, and also it was dark blue. Now, here's the thing. I don't know, I've never seen this in any other city in Britain. Maybe it happens in other cities around the world, but it's, it's very much a London thing. They have some weird, weird plain clothes cars in London. Now, I don't know whether they're plain clothes police or whether it's MI5, MI6, some mm. kind of sinister organisation we don't even know about yet. But, but they've got blue always lights, dark yeah. blue. <laughs> when I first moved to London about uh, six years ago, and I was walking down the A1 through Highgate one day, and I heard these sirens, and round the corner on the wrong side of the road came in order a Renault Safran dark blue 30 points for weirdness a Ford Scorpio the bug eyed one also dark blue classic police choice score only 18 points and a Nissan QX Oof. That's off the scale. A QX, they bought it in a sale, did they? Police I sale. I thought it was like the crack depreciation unit or something. <laughs> it was but, but it was bizarre. And they were all dark blue. They all had the Kojak light on the roof and they were going hell for leather. And I was thinking, what the bloody hell? Because you wouldn't see, you'd see those cars on the street and you, you'd just think, oh, there's a minicab here. So they're ultra, ultra plain clothes. But what were they up to? What division are they from? Why did they pick those cars? And it's it's very, very odd London thing. It's got to be a, some kind of super elite car. Yes, it's such spooks or amazingly, you know, dull car. You know, cars like that. If you know the answer, contact Speed Stoppers on Speed at GarethJones.tv. If you have any information about who that police department was, email us now. Gareth, there's a red laser dot in the back of your head coming oh. through the window. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Gareth Jones on Speed presents Now This Is What I Call 80s Music About Cars 2 With Springsteen and Waits There's a factory in Detroit that is broken, cold and empty Where the lines lie idle And the teamsters ain't union Like a Catholic love communion Yet the streets still roar with thunder The storm just thunder GT40 is this the cure? Oh, you usually see us at bus stops In groups of three, four or five Our expressions are glum We miss out on the fun Because goths don't drive Ultra Vauxhall I drove in the cold air Down European boulevards The chill of air that swept the world The strange European car Actually known as Prince Cause all the other girls are driving cars that are cool I'm only four feet tall but honey I'm no fool 
Oh baby, baby, let me buy you a car A one that is purple, one a TV car I wanted a car ever since A car that is fit for a prince In the rainbow From infrared To dashy to blue I've got a tight old purple Vauxhall Chevette Baby wanna shove it to you I've got a tight old purple Vauxhall Chevette Baby wanna shove it to you Woo! Gareth Jones on speed The 80s is in us all And we're ready for the 90s Just as soon as they happen do you know the coolest police car I ever saw? Real police car. Mm. You'll like this. You said Hell for Leather a few minutes ago. It made me think of it, right? Hell for Leather. In the Netherlands. Yes. You seen the guys who ride the BMW bikes in the, in the Netherlands? Green leather jackets. Have you ever yeah, noticed? Yeah, seen, yeah. Very, very cool. A lot of orange going on. I was touring, oh, this must have been 1983 or thereabouts. Uh, yeah, rock and roll years, 83, uh, eight, 79 to 85, sometime in them. I was touring in, in the Netherlands with, with a rock group. If you can remember the years 79 to 85, you weren't there, man. <laughs> I was there, there was a real smell of hairspray. <laughs> oh, the 80s. Anyway, and the, the Dutch. <laughs> The Dutch police were driving around, and Zog, you're going to have to really think about this one because more well, of anyone. I'm, I'm just the, the, you know what's coming. The, the, well, this, this may be similar to this may have something to do with a. This may be like a story of a friend of mine who a few years ago was very excited to be uh, pulled over for speeding in Holland uh, by a, a, a 9-11. Is Police the correct car. answer. That's no. right. Yeah, yeah. Really? Moreover, you know, the, the wonderful green, the Netherlands police oh, it's a good look, it's green a good and the blue they, and they, the they, white. Right. I thought they were white with a green stripe. This, like this, a this was, written I, if I remember, this was green, but it had it had the bullies. Polish, Polish on the side in blue and white, if I remember, a bit like so the kind of the North American thing. But it was the Targa. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. With that, also, with that vinyl finish, your, your, your Kojak lamp wouldn't stick to it. <laughs> yeah, but you, but you can kind of sort of leap out of the vehicle more swiftly That's with that true. extra, you know. Or they have the not, even, not even open the doors. Dukes of Hazard style, exactly, or like in yeah, uh, Smoking yeah, the Bandit with yeah. the T bird, you know, the T top thing. Yeah, leap in. Yeah. Cool. It's Very cool. Like it a lot. They looked magnificent. But the best bit of motor policing I've ever had, I'm going to wrap this up for you now, right? But the best bit of motor policing, I was uh, at the San Marino Grand Prix. Have I told you this story before? in about 1998 huge traffic trying to get off the autostrada off the exit to I forgot what it's called Autodromo now the Autodromo right. di Enzo di Ferrari yeah. so mm. we were all diligently remembering this is in Europe so we're all left hand drive and driving on the right hand side we were all diligently waiting on the right as the traffic backed up at the exit right and there was the tail, tail wax going it's going back you know six kilometres or something however some wise guys were trying to stuff their way in round the outside how much do we hate people who try and squeeze in at the last minute in the little gaps oh, quite yeah. a lot we all hate yeah. that in Italy this is how they deal with it mm-hmm. it's beautiful right because first of all no one was going to let him in but right at the end of the junction, there was a copper with one of those huge light sticks that, that, oh, that they have. I love those in Italy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they're waving kind of the like a short lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it is. I think it makes that sound. Sawn off lightsaber. As you walk past them. Sawn off lightsaber. <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> Look, you missed my <laughs> arm. Oh, I picked the wrong weapon. Real gangster Jedis who live in yeah. a lockup under the arches in East End. Uh, <laughs> the East End of. Uh, Tatooine, steady now, boys. I say Vulcan. Now, so this Politi's at the end of the line, waving his sword off lightsaber, v- waving the cars in the line on, and he sees these guys trying to sneaking round the outside, and with a big friendly Italian Latin warm gesture, beckons them over. Come on, fellas, don't try and tuck in on the outside. Come over here, and so they go. This is fantastic. Blast to the front of the queue. At which point, his gesture turns from "Don't come in this way" to "Go back on." To the motorway <laughs> 10 kilometers down to oh. the next roundabout where there's a queue to get back on the motorway to do 20 kilometers before you can get off the junctions it's going to toss them three hours the most brilliant bit of policing i've ever seen in my life only the italians i applaud them oh. okay. molto bene molto bene bravissimo 
Hey, speaking of which, actually, just you know, we're talking about Dutch motorcycle cops. I was in uh, Florence over the summer, oh. and did I tell you this about? I, we we I, in a Gibbs Aquad. Oh no, that's the, that's for um, that's not Florence. That's Venice. 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 Yeah, Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I was in a Fit Panda. Bloody brilliant. But um, it was raining one day, and uh, so heard these sirens on this wet, slightly cobbled street in places. And these two motorcycle cops came racing down, and I c- they went so fast I couldn't even see what kind of bikes they were on. They were probably those big BMWs, because they were hefty bikes with panniers, the big fairing, the light on a stick, all that. They got to the end of the street, which, as far as I could tell, was cobbled at that point, and they went round it. I swear to God, they had their knees down. They were just, they oh, went round it like, I mean, oh, yeah. balls of steel. <laughs> it was amazing. I just thought you'd never get that. Motorcycle cops in this country are like mirror signal maneuver. That's right, driving yeah. safely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I don't ever do more than four. There was, these guys were just going like, they, they both thought they were Valentino Rossi. It was amazing. Beautiful. Is it just me, or do, do motorcycle cops always have sort of the top half of their body strangely out of proportion to the bottom <laughs> half? They always seem to be kind of twice as big yes. at the top of their body. <laughs> It's a is condition it, is it, is it, is it the jackets, or are they actually just... Yeah, all got, like, I, I, do, do you know what it is? Do they just select, for, you know... Having ridden motorbikes for many years, I can tell you what it is, right? Some days it's so cold out there, right? You've got at least 77 layers on your upper body. You can't get any more in your leg because you can't get stride the bike. So they're bulked out. It's probably bulked out by Complan as well, you know. They, they, it helps <laughs> keep them warm. Oh, I used to get cold on a bike, but that's another story. We must talk about bikes on, on this show one day, one day. Um, I don't have much bike, bike experience, but... Uh, well, there's still time, so there's still time. You've been listening to Gareth Jones on Speed. I'm Gareth Jones. I'm Zog, and next time I'm going to be Jacques Cousteau. Uh, I've been Richard Porter, but next time I will be Boyle's Law for the expansion of gases. And they will fill every space you have. And I'll be gas top. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. Bye. You can subscribe to Gareth Jones on Speed at the iTunes store. Find out more about the show at www.garethjones.tv or email us at onspeed at garethjones.tv. This episode of Gareth Jones on Speed featured very little back combing or hair gel or hair crimping, but it was made by Whizbang. Bang. <laughs>